Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk about Rasheed Rice, number 11 wide receiver, SMU Mustangs. Let's give you a few stats before we get into the film from Rasheed. His senior season at SMU, he had 96 catches, 1,355 yards, 10 TDs. When I looked up some, some more in depth stats, um, career numbers 233 receptions. 3,111 yards, 25 total TDs. He had 645 snaps on the outside, 134 snaps in the slot. He had 156 targets this year, 96 catches, a 61.5% catch rate, catch rate, nine drops, and a 48.5% contested, contested catch percentage. Contested catches being a big point because of, well, we'll talk about that in the film. Roll the intro. So before we get into the Rasheed Rice video, if this is your first time here, please like the video. Subscribe also and hit the bell so you can be notified when these random videos drop. But let's dive into the Rasheed Rice video, number 11, SMU Mustangs. We're going to start off with two plays versus Cincinnati and no block, no rock is simply that you don't block. <laughs> you don't get the ball. That's a motto. I kind of tried to, you know, put on kids when I was coaching and uh, a lot of them took to it and did it. But I love to see this. Love to see it. This is number five, I think, versus Cincinnati. And he basically dog walks it. I love it. I love it. Seeing that type of stuff makes me want to get you involved more via throwing you the ball <laughs> but i will say karma is something else reason i say that let's go to the second play versus cincinnati again they're at the top of your screen bad release same kid got payback got a lot of payback that little stutter foot fire didn't work and fire dog walked him into the sideline into his own sideline <laughs> but the thing about that is i love it I just, it's two guys competing. You get me some plays, I get you some plays, and we just, you know, keep it within the within the lines. And I love it. First first play I showed you, he dog walked the DB. This play, the DB got him back. <laughs> and it's just two guys going after it. All right, now we're going to move to um, Maryland. This cat got A1 ball skills. He don't have the best routes. He's not the fastest. But look at this. Between two guys. Mm. And basically, the, the corner came over to help the other guy. And he goes up and lays out backwards, extends, and completes the catch by falling on your back. Probably even bumped your head a little bit because you was laid out backwards. Finishes the catch. A1 ball skills. But you got to have ball skills when you don't have the greatest route, so you're not the fastest. You just, you just got to have them. Something has to elevate if you're missing those traits. Again, another example of A1 ball skills. Again, it's not the greatest route. Guy's on him. Back shoulder. But he extends. He elevates and extends again. Elevates and extends. Similar play. Goes up. Lays out backwards. High points it to the best of his ability. And completes the catch. While landing on his back. And that's a key part of it. Because if this ball bounces out when you land, there's no catch. But for two plays that we've seen in this game versus Maryland, he goes up basically backwards, lands on his back, and completes the catch. Contest the catch at that. You see flags going coming in. And you'll see, like if you go back and watch his games, he draw a lot of flags. Draw a lot of flags. And we're going to talk about number four, I mean, number one versus TCU. He got four PIs on that guy individually, but we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. Still versus Maryland, next play. Uh, this play kind of relates to what we'll see in the NFL out of them. You get an inside release. It's a lot of traffic. And you basically, you know, it's a tight window throw by the quarterback, so I don't know if the quarterback could prospect too, but you get, you know, guy here, guy here, guy here. That's a tight window. 
Quarterback fits it in. He makes the most out of it. Rice makes the most out of it. Gets a little taste of yak, maybe a yard or two. But, again, that's going to relate to the NFL. That's that's what we can expect to see, you know, from NFL caliber play right there. Tight window throws, you get the ball, get up field. But I will say that when he did have a chance to get yak, it wasn't a lot of dancing. It was catching the ball and getting north and south. Tracking the ball. Again, ball skills. It's not just going up and getting it. Watch the concentration. Because, again, the guy's in his hip pocket in phase. This is another contested catch. And watch how he tracks this ball over his shoulder. I didn't pay attention to see if he stemmed to get the quarterback more room. But watch him track this ball as it comes in. Starting now. Oh, ain't got a foot in. Ain't got a foot in. Elite ball tracker. <laughs> Here we are versus uh, working versus zone. He does a good job of running this curl and working back to the QB to help his QB out. And that, you know, some people won't won't understand why this is important because you'll get a lot of kids, a lot of receivers, they'll curl up right here and then won't come back to the ball and then they'll give this guy an opportunity to break on it and also this guy an opportunity to break on it. But by him working back, that lets him keep his cushion and it makes these guys have to go through him to get to the ball if they want to get to it. They're just not allowed to, you know, read the quarterback and have a free reception. By him working back, that helps the quarterback out too. That's why you want to run your route beyond the sticks. That way if you when you work back, you can still catch it for a first down. You don't want to run this curl route right here, then got to work back, and now you still four yards short. You run it beyond the sticks, then work your way back, and that way if you catch it, you still, you know, potentially got the first down, even though he works back kind of far on this one. He ends up just a yard short of the first down. Got one, uh, now we're at TCU. Now, again, I talked about him not being the fastest, not being the quickest. And he does have some routes where you see some uh-uh and get in and out of the break. But there are also, you know, enough plays like this to make me have concern. Watch out, you know, how long, how many steps it takes him to get out of the break. And he slips. One, two, three, four. That's a lot. Now, had the DB not slip, he would have jumped all over it. The DB slip too. But again, it's not every play, but it's enough to to have concern about how fast he get in and out of breaks. Because you know the NFL DB is going to be all over this. NFL DB, <laughs> if you do it like that versus NFL DB, he's right here right now look, waiting on the ball <laughs> already. Already. The decent to good ones. Now two more plays. A drop. You saw some concentration drops. Again, nobody's on him. And all he did was took his eyes off the ball too early. Because, see, he has the ball. But now his eyes coming off of it, and now he don't have it. And what I used to do with young kids was um, in practice, I'd tell them, catch to the tuck, eyes to the tuck. So your eyes on the ball, to the tuck, over-exaggerated, and hopefully it becomes muscle memory, and you don't have drops like this. Eyes to the tuck. So, bam. Catch it. Keep looking. Eyes, eyes, all the way till you took it. And then you then you go. And and that won't prevent it won't prevent every drop, but it does help. Because they start having muscle memory. Especially when you're doing pat and go, routes on air. Every every drill that's that a defense is not out there, like a full defense, eyes to the tuck. Even in seven on seven. Eyes to the tuck. And that'll prevent that'll help with drops. I ain't gonna say prevent, that'll help with drops. But then you get that drop, then you come back with this right here. And again, I mentioned Number one, having four P.I. calls on him. This is one of them. This is one of them. And again, not the fastest, not the greatest. He's just better than them. Better than one. He has the elite ball skills. And watch him tell him, you're too little, man. <laughs> you're too little. <laughs> That's the fourth pass interference on number one this game. He's just too little. Well, at least that's what he's telling him. He's kind of showing off a little bit. Watch him go up and get this. He's just better than you. One. Again, another pass interference, but a big-time catch. Let's go into uh, Rice's scores. And remember, my scores are based out of 80, not out of 100. So a perfect score will be 80. If 
for hands, I have him at a 69. Routes and releases, 63. IQ, 69. Game speed, 62. Because sometimes he just looked like he's not running. And he may be not fleet of feet, of foot rather. But a lot of times he just looked like he's not running. And I have a problem with that. Um, and then for Yak, he had some Yak opportunities, not a lot, because a lot of his catches were going up, getting the ball, and and getting tackled and whatnot. So the few times he did have Yak opportunities, he didn't waste steps. He caught the ball, got north and south, and got what he could. So I appreciate that part of him. He got a 76 in Yak, which gave him a total score of 67.8. That puts him the fourth receiver out of four receivers. I'm not saying he's the worst receiver, but I've only done four, and he just – Four out of four so far. But again, this is my two cents on Rasheed Rice. If you have not liked the video and you're still here, please do so. Like the video. Subscribe also and hit the bell so you can be notified when they drop. And um, start keeping with the trend that we've started What earlier this week or last week. If you made it this far in the video, hit hashtag 11 for Rasheed Rice. Hashtag 11. And I appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. See you next time. Peace. With the